Spruce finds food wherever he goes. I think he would be okay with this being his dedicated nursery pen. 100%. Close the door. It's my place. Hey, why don't you get your can out of my face? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's Kyle and Shannon here at k and Get Out. It has to be the best day weather-wise it's been in Oh, it's months. gorgeous. It, it's surreal. I think it's 64 degrees right now. Yeah, I know, I know. So I, my wow. list of projects, you know, it's days like today, you're like, I'm doing two through 62. <laughs> we only have so much time. Yep. So I already got up this morning and took the trencher back, topped it off with fuel, because they like to encourage you to do that by threatening to charge $10 a gallon. That's so a lot. Kept it under the eight hours, and I got the trench done over here for the Shafas. Hey, I was going to ask you, did you actually look to see how long it took you to do everything? About, like how many hours? Just about five, a little over five hours. I think I spent a total of about two, two, two and a half here, because I finished up this connection right here, which I was very pleased with. And of course, I got my post hole digger, so we're going to be uh, getting a little bit of that cleaned up by hand. But I was able to straddle we, this. You and mean you. Well, yeah, <laughs> but I was able to straddle it and not uh, dip the trencher into the trench. Thank goodness. Hey, good job. The little tracks on that thing are amazing. It's awesome. Up here at the side of the building, I measured on the inside. I brought my sub panel out that I'm going to be using in there. And I found the two studs that I wanted to keep it between. And I was able to do up to the building fairly well. Again, I'm going to have to use the rock bar and a, the hoe or pickaxe or something and kind of finish this off but connects there a little bit of extra rock to pick up right here because we need well and I keep kicking them in <laughs> <laughs> and my birds really enjoy helping me push these trenches back in but we still have the dump truck thank goodness thank you Ken and we got some rock in there but we're gonna dump that out go get the fines and make a bedding for that cable speaking of the birds filling in my trench let's go get the birds out watch the flight of the bird army down the hill and then go see the furry ones. Okay, sounds good. Got to talk to you a little bit about mama. She's ready, we're ready. <laughs> we're ready, she's close. And this weather change we're hoping kind of entices her to go. Mm-hmm. Okay, well let's get to it. Countdown's on. Good morning, bird birds. My bird birds. Everybody good? Still, you know, I, I still see a little more feathers here and there, but it doesn't look like it was bad as that one night. We had a lot of folks tell us that they molt yeah, this is all new to us, so we didn't know. <laughs> Which I knew, I mean, I'd heard of it, but it, I just, I knew some of the feed buckets had been knocked over and we caught a possum on the camera weeks ago. Yeah. I don't remember when it was. Yeah. Uh, but just as an update, the big trap with the raspberry Pop-Tart in it caught us a big old possum, angry possum yesterday. So he no longer lives on Shady Acres or planet Earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I don't know, you know, possums, yeah, they can eat bugs and they can be okay, but if they're up here around the birds, they have ill intent and I'm keeping my birds safe. And you should. Speaking of which, you guys want to come out and eat and hang out with us today? Come on, Good bird morning, birds. bird birds. Let me get your worms. I know that's all you really want. Hi, Christina. Oh, oh, oh did you hear that? <laughs> did you hear that? Well, he knows that sound, goodness. You know, the last two days in a row, I have worn a red shirt. And we had talked about that when we first got the Turks, like, hey, watch them Toms. They uh, sometimes get a little whatever at red shirts. And they do. But what is it that we noticed yesterday that was really causing them to puff up and stay up? We were down oh. by... <laughs> So we have one of those really cool little portable radios, you know, so we can take it anywhere on the land. And when we're working on projects, we can hook our phones up and play music or whatever. Well, we have learned as of yesterday, when you turn that thing on and the bass starts hitting and the music starts playing, these two just get jacked. It's like <laughs> you push the button and they're like, bah, 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 gobble, gobble, uh, can't do anything about it. It's stinking hilarious. It is. But it's a little scary and weird because I just want to listen to music as I bring them up here and stuff. And it takes them until they're like quite a ways from it to calm down. But they don't act out at us. So I don't know. Just fun things. Apparently they don't like music. All right, I mean, the guineas birds. are kind of going after each other a little bit this morning. They've, they've started to get a little more aggressive with their age. They, uh, 
they'll even kind of float up and peck at the turkeys up here close to their beaks and the turkeys are just like what are you hey stop it <laughs> and the guineas are so stinking fast that those turkeys don't even have a chance In typical fashion, we uh, don't tell Chad. He loves to give us a hard time about this, but we went down and fed the animals like we always do and got some cute footage and everything, but our microphones might have failed us a bit. So you're just gonna get a little bit of that footage with some cute little music to it, because the animals are always cute and who doesn't want to see them? I know it's nothing new, but it's so good to see you. We do this every day. And I'm still so amazed by you So hold me tight through the night mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just us two
So we had the trencher for eight hours. It only took me about three-ish hours to do that run over there for the Shafis. So I got a little selfish and I was like, man, I'm gonna go ahead and dig a trench so I don't have to do it by hand to the shed. Now we have power for the camper, plus some extra breakers here, and we have our water line right here. And I just capped it under the ground. So if I'm feeling real frisky, I may dig down and bring water in at the same time. And then we can put a washer and dryer in there and not have to worry about trying to get water up to the shop office right away. Right, because it's so much closer here. And, and we and have septic right there. Yeah. So I can dump out into that, no problem. And it's not really being selfish, babe. It's being smart with using the tools while you had them. That's true. Yeah, it was a little tricky right here because it's such a tight space. But I was able to start over here knowing where I would come out of that and dig back as far as I could. And then I just shimmied it and tried not to drop it down into the <laughs> trench. And I dug back this way. But what you end up with, because you're running the machine against itself more or less, is all this material right here that I'm going to have to get out by hand. It's at least loose. So it looks very daunting. It's going to be pretty daunting, but it's, it's all been stirred up. You know what I mean? Like the rocks aren't in. Yeah. So it's not super hard. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited about this one too. We can get rid of some of these extension cables that we have running all over the place. <laughs> and I can have power in my shed while you're sitting up there in your sweet air conditioned shop. Thank you. <laughs> I'll be sitting by fan. No problem. Now this, this went well and the birds helped me after I was done, they came over and were walking around the edges of it, pushing rocks and dirt back in. I said, thanks birds. That's exactly what I needed. That was sweet of them. They're, they're a bittersweet animal. They really <laughs> are. I love them, but sometimes you're just like, ah, stop it. I say they're bittersweet because they poop everywhere and I have to hose it off. So that's annoying. But they're loyal to a fault. Yeah, they are. I mean, if I'm As ever soon as feeling, they hear Kyle's voice. Yeah. If I'm ever feeling down or a little bad about myself, I'll just walk out and say, bird birds. And they all come up and they're like, we love you. We love you. We love you. And I'm like, okay, I love you too. Goodbye. <laughs> they're fun. Okay. So this one's good. I will have to do the same thing. I mean, this is just common when you use a trencher, but the beginning and ending points, you just can't get right up where you need to be. So I'll be swinging the uh, pickaxe and the rock bar a bit here, but very excited to get to use that to help progress. Yes. All right, well, we got one other that we snuck in before I took it back. So let's go take a look at that one real quick, and then we'll go talk about Mama and check on how she's doing. So we're down in front of the well house. This is Goatville. That's the electric fence right there. And basically, when I set this up, I just ran the hot, the power, and the ground cable right out of the charger. And I put my ground rod right here, and then it livens the fence right here. And uh, the cables have just been sitting on top of the ground since I did that. And we don't come down here too often, but Shannon was down here weeding the other day, did an awesome job. And she expressed how she almost biffed it because she didn't see the cable. <laughs> and I told on myself for also almost taking them out with the four wheeler one time. Yeah. So while I had the trencher, I did the same thing here that I did up outside of my shed and just had to kind of work one way, turn around, work the other. Uh, for somehow, uh, there's more dirt in the middle of this one. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. That looks like a lot of digging, babe. What I'll probably do is actually bring down the tractor. It's okay to make the hole a little bigger than you have to, especially if it makes my life a lot easier. Uh, it's just a little tougher to get the tractor in that tight spot up there, but I'm gonna figure out how to do this a little smarter than harder. How are you gonna use the tractor, babe? That looks like it would make a huge hole. If you saw half of the things I did out here when nobody's watching and you're not looking, you'd be like, what are you? Uh, all right, all right, I get it. Trust me. I'm gonna dig a big hole going this direction just to get that dirt out. And then I'll fill it back in. And this is why I just have to walk away and not say anything and just let him do his thing because I get anxiety when I start hearing huge holes are gonna be dug outside the well house. <laughs> hey, you were just telling me when you were cleaning the camper, you gotta make a mess before you can clean a mess. This is the same story. Okay, fine. Yeah, I'll I, give you that. I promise it'll be it'll be good. I may even get some of these rocks out of here for you. You never know. It could be better in the end. I have full faith in you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that was great. I dropped off the trencher early this morning and the gentleman that's taking it off the trailer. He was like, did you get your trench dug? I said, nope. And he goes, oh, really? I said, yeah, I got three of them dug <laughs> like I was cool or something. <laughs> I thought I, I was excited. 
I'm excited we got all that done. Me too. I love that trencher and I will never dig a trench by hand in the future. And I probably will avoid excavators unless I just need something bigger. That trencher is a much more efficient way to do that. For sure. A little bit easier to manage too. All okay. right. Shall we go check on mama? Yeah. And look who's hanging out in Goatville together. Did they, they close themselves in? Oh, Herc and Mario did? Yeah. Oh, how funny. I thought they were just hanging out together and Herc was hanging with Mario. Didn't we let Mario back in after we fed? Wait, 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 wait. Something's not right. Let's go find out what's going how on. How is he down there with him and a gate closed behind him? What happened, Baba? Did you lock yourself down in Goatville? Well, this is all twisted again. What happened? I don't really know. This was open and Herc was up here. So either he went down and Spruce thought it would be funny and came and closed the gate. <laughs> or Mario will scratch on this gate and maybe he scratched on it on that side and ended up closing it and locking them in. And then he tried to break Herc out. We have no idea what happened, guys. These mystery goats. Bubba, do you want to come back in here? So in the last video, we talked about Mario breaking in, having the gate closed, and when he bangs on it, this is exactly what it does. It wasn't like this this morning, so no. he's literally done this in the last however long, not very much time. But a lot of you mentioned, and I kind of remember hearing about it when I was reading the instructions on these way back in the day, uh, but this hole right here, there's one here, and there's one on the other side of this little collar, and I can basically, I think I need to take a metal bit and drill through the tubing as well. Then I can put a set screw or a bolt through there with a nut on the other side, and that will keep it from twisting like this. Which makes perfect sense because there are much larger animals than goats, uh, like bulls for instance. And if they had a gate like this and a bull wanted through, that would be no problem to spin without having that set screw in there. So I'll measure that diameter and get some screws for that, and uh, or a screw for that. Probably go ahead and do it for the others as well. Okay, that's probably a good idea. And you know, that's how you learn. You do it, you put yourself on YouTube not knowing, and then everybody's like, hey dude, uh, that could be done right or better. <laughs> so thanks guys for all the comments on that in the last video. That kind of stuff helps us more than we can express sometimes. Yeah. Hey, check out Luigi. That guy works really hard for a living. Oh my gosh. <laughs> He's so funny. He hasn't even moved since we've gotten down here. No, not at all. He is out cold. Oh, Miss Mama. Let's go give an update on Miss Mama. So last night we went ahead and put Mama in the new nursery because we just really felt like she was getting close and we wanted her to have her own private little space. But we left her in there for, I don't know, maybe a couple of hours and we watched her. We, we kept a camera on her and she just didn't seem comfortable. She wasn't in her normal space. So well, she wouldn't lay down. She wouldn't lay down. She stood in the shelter the whole time. And we know that she wants to lay down and relax. So we came back down here. It's probably what, 9.30? Uh, at least, yeah. Probably 9.30 last night. And Kyle led her back in with all the rest of the goats. And she came in and immediately just laid down and was comfortable and super happy in her happy space. So we've been talking about separating them or separating her. But I think we got to look at some other options. Well, she does really well with the Blues crew, all three of them. Yeah. And she likes this nursery, and she knows this to be a nursery. This was Spruce's room when we were bottle feeding him. Yeah. And, of course, the two goatlets over here, the Blues bros, you know. So I think for her, it seems like she knows, hey, this is a safe place for me to nest, and I could have my goatlets in here. Yeah. But I don't know how they would do with Blue and the Blues bros if she were to go into labor and they were in there with them. I'm, I'm nervous about that, too. So, I don't know, we're gonna test some stuff. Uh, you know, ultimately what we wanna do is be able to get these guys out and either be out here full time or split their time, you know, like we have been over here, put them in that new nursery at night and then let them be out during the day. Yeah. But then it's a matter of what do we do with we Mario? We gotta figure out what to, do, what to do with Mario. I have a goat down here eating my pants. Hey bud, what are you doing? What's going on? Nothing hungry. You don't eat my clothes, remember? Well, We're not clothes eaters. I could, Mom. I don't, don't think step so. in her poop. I know, he's going to do that and then jump Let's on me. Can we show him an update on you? Are you okay with that? 
so we did notice yesterday see that spot right there so mama's bag is so full that when she walks she is just like rubbing against it and chafing so we noticed yesterday she's done that quite a bit and so we sprayed some of that wound spray what's it called again it's like a blue blue something or other antiseptic it's what we use on pretty much any of the goats if they get a cut they or get a boo -boo. A, yeah so it's it's supposed to be safe it's just supposed to be a little disinfectant because we don't want anything to happen but it is looking better um okay I just <laughs> She's As we were looking at it, <laughs> things were moving around back there, but then it was just poop. Yeah, but it, we both got nervous there for a second, like, what is getting ready to happen? Well, and I think we witnessed last night, I think I saw some of the goats on both sides of her. You could see the goat parts, you know, she was kicking. Kicking. I don't know if it was her dilating or, I, I don't really know all the details of it, but there was some motion in her midsection. Yep. So, and yeah. I've been feeling around her tail and where those ligaments are, they're soft. Yeah. I mean, like, I compared it to Blue and Luigi and the others, and it's a big difference. That's why I'm certain she's going to go soon. I hope so, because we have 90 degree days after these next three days that we're supposed to be like in the middle, lower 80s. We're going back up to the mid 90s, and I believe there's even a 100 degree day in oh. the latter part of next week. I don't want her having a baby during that time. Uh, you know, it's twofold because then you also have goatlets that are dealing with that kind of heat right after birth. Well, that's true. You know, I don't know. We'll uh, we'll time that better in the future if we ever let our goats get pregnant intentionally again. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on that. We're talking about different pins because you guys know right now Mario's the problem. Yeah. So we're thinking about, hey, that's enough. Spruce just thinks he needs all the attention I do. all the time. I really do. Because he's just a spoiled goat and he has to have all eyes on him. Doesn't everyone agree out there in YouTube land? Yeah, this is the Spruce show, isn't it? Yeah. I would even change the channel name to Spruce is the best. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, you oh, can, for sure. You can come up with something a little bit more clever than Spruce like... Spruce is the greatest. Like Spruce's Adventures or something like that? Oh, the Adventures of Spruce? Yeah. All my butt scratches and my feedings. Yeah. Love them. <laughs> oh my gosh, this guy is ridiculous. He's been rubbing on me, pushing on me, just doing everything he can to get attention today. Isn't that right, little guy? It's okay, because we still love you. It's almost like they don't even know how to act now that it's not blistering hot and they're not just panting incessantly. Oh, yeah, definitely. So they're like, hey, uh, we can be active right now. So what I'll probably do after a little bit is put Mario down in Goatville and maybe let everybody else out and kind of graze around and see how it goes. Might even work on Herc being around the birds with his leash again. It's been a minute since I've been doing that. Yeah. So right where she's laying right now, this is her comfy spot that she kind of retreats to. And she can feel the fan. Spruce. Holy spruce. Mm. You are ridiculous. It's it's not always about you, Spruce. Yeah, it is. It's just, it's not. It's mm -hmm. not always about you. It is right now. So right here, she's comfortable. She can feel the fan. And we're just going to keep an eye on her. She may be comfortable. She looks a little miserable. I know. I do feel bad for her. She's She's got to be miserable. She's been a trooper, though. This is bad habit, Spruce. They just don't know what to do with themselves because it's not as hot. I know. I and they're like, pay is. attention to me. They're like, hey, we can do stuff during the day. Let's play. Yeah. Like, see how much Ouija's wanting to play? He's alive, right? Hi, buddy. I hate to be that morbid about it, but you weren't moving at all. You just weren't moving, honey. Made us a little nervous. <laughs> just wanted to check on you, big guy.
she just did that same thing she did last night where if it's a pee, like when she pees, typically, you know she's peeing. I mean, any girl, female goat is gonna be that way. But she squats for a split second and just a ring of about that much water comes out. And both times, she did it in the shelter last night and she just did it right here. And Herc acts very differently about that urine than he does her regular pee. So I don't know if goats like water breaks or if there's some kind of discharge saying, hey, they're coming, they're coming. But he acts very strange whenever she does that. And it's just small spotting rather than a full urination. Yeah. However you say And that. he's staying pretty close to her. Yeah. And he's he's sniffing her area. I mean, it's uh, we've got to be right there. Just yeah. right there. She's even gone down into Goatville by herself. Yeah. She, she will She hasn't sometimes, been doing that. Like that. Yeah. Man, look at what Mario has done to these trees out here. All right, so we moved the camera down here and we got to wrap the video up, but mama came down here and is acting a little suspicious. Not that we were already, you know, not paranoid and watching her closely, but <laughs> I've got this camera repositioned and we'll keep an eye on her. The birds are gonna keep her nice and awake. She actually went down into Goatville and she is laying down in between two logs that are on the ground. She has not done that in a long time she normally stays up in the shelter and hangs out up there so yeah that's a very atypical place for her to even do that even before she was ever pregnant yeah so this could be the day it's a nice little safe spot yeah i do like that but we'll keep an eye on her oh she's thinking about getting up but it's a lot of work So we'll keep you guys posted as things progress. We'll see what happens. Yeah, her, I mean, her belly's moving. I, I don't even know what to do. Oh my gosh, her belly is moving. All right, so the trenches are dug. I will do the final tidying work at the terminal points, but we need to dump that rock out of the dump truck, go pick up the fines, and we'll make the bed for the direct burial cable. Yes. Today sounds like a great day to do that while it's not blistering hot. Sounds good. Down for that plan? I'm down. All right, uh, I've got all the cameras pointed at Mama, so we're gonna be watching her and, and we'll keep you guys posted as soon as she starts going into labor. Yep. All right, guys, well, we love and appreciate each and every one of you, and we thank you so much for coming along on this journey with us. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. <clears throat> I want to say goodbye. We'll say goodbye then. Goodbye then. Well, you gotta say, Bye, YouTube family. Bye, YouTube family. Bye, I YouTube love you. Family.
Bye, Facebook family. Love you. Where are my Instagrammer spammers? I love Instagram, Mom. I know you do. I also like Golden Grams. Oh, do you? You've never had Golden Grams, silly boy. He's so handsome. <laughs> He's like, Dad, would you shut your birds up, please? Oh, oh, is that? Are you upset with me about it? 